Today's goal is to uh, learn how to do four things. We're going to learn how to use the density formula, which is rho is equal to mass over volume. Rho is the Greek letter that's used to symbolize density. And we can transpose the variables so that we can rearrange the formula to have density times volume is equal to mass. Or we can swing the, uh, the rho down and have volume is equal to mass over density. So you can, there are three variables, and you can, there are three ways you can rearrange the formula. The second skill we're going to need to use is how to find volumes for a sphere. And the volume for a sphere is 4 over 3 uh, pi r cubed, where r symbolizes the radius. The third skill is learning how to find cube roots, because once you find uh, the volume of a cube, given the fact that a cube has all sides equal, and we know that the volume of a cube is given by length times width times height, and the fact that length is equal to the width is equal to the height in a cube, then we can simply use L cubed to find the volume of, of a, uh, a cubic object. And if we have the volume of the cubic object, we can take the cubic root, the cube root, to find the length of one of the sides. And then the last skill we're going to need is to learn how to convert units. So let's start with the questions. A Fermi question named after Enrico Fermi because of all of the interesting questions he used to ask his students to get them to think. Uh, analytically and mathematically. The Earth's crust contains 7.5% aluminum by weight. Assuming the Earth's crust is 20 miles thick, that the Earth is 7,926 miles in diameter, and that the crustal density is 3.0 grams per centimeter cubed, how big of a cube of aluminum could you make from all the aluminum in the Earth's crust? So here's the rationale for solving this problem. We're going to have five steps. The first, the first step is to find the volume of the Earth's crust. And the way we're going to do that is by calculating the volume of the entire Earth and then cal calculate the volume of the part that it lies just beneath the crust. By subtracting those two, volume 1 minus volume 2, you'll find the difference, and that's, that's the volume of the crust. You sometimes see the same uh, strategy used in uh, textbooks to find the area of an odd-shaped uh, figure. For example, I have a square here with a square cutout, and I'm asked to find the volume of the, that part of the square. Well, the square is 2 by 2, and the cutout is 1 by 1. So the area of the, the part that's shaded in is 4 minus 1. 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, 4 minus 1 gives you 3. That's the area of the shaded part. So we're doing the same thing, except we're working with volumes. We're, we're finding the volume of the outer sphere, volume of the inner sphere, and by difference, we're finding the volume of the crust, the outer layer. Now we're going to use the density formula, density equals mass over volume, where the density, the crustal density is 3.0 grams per centimeter cubed. And then we're going to rearrange the equation to find the, the mass of the Earth's crust. In the third step, we use the mass of the Earth's crust multiplied by 7.5%, because 7.5% uh, of the mass of the Earth's crust is pure aluminum. By doing that, we find how much aluminum is in the Earth's crust. Then we use the density formula again, but this time we solve for volume to find out what the volume of the aluminum is in the Earth's crust. We then take the cube root of the volume to find the length or the height of a cube made of pure aluminum. Okay, so that's our rationale. That's how we step. We solve our, all our multi-step problems. We set out what the steps are, and then you'll see that it's when you have it set up in discrete steps, each individual step is actually quite easy. Here's the first step. We have the diameter of the Earth, and we need to convert it into kilometers. So to do that, you need to know conversion factors. And there's a trick to using conversion factors. It's very easy. You start from left, and you work your way to the right, and you only look at the units. The Earth's diameter is 7,926 miles. You want to get rid of this unit miles. How are we going to get rid of something that's in the numerator we're going, to put some, we're going to put the same thing in the denominator. But you also have to know what the conversion factor is from miles to feet. And it's 5,280 feet per mile. So I put 5,280 feet in the numerator, and I put miles in the denominator. That way I can cancel miles. Now my answer is going to be in feet. So I want to get rid of feet, and I'm going to convert feet into inches. So what am I going to do? 12 inches per foot, or I could write 1 foot per 12 inches. But that would be the wrong way to write it. So how do I decide what the right way to write it is? I want to get rid of feet, so I have to put feet in the bottom, and the 12 inches on top. That cancels feet. Now I have an answer in inches. I want to convert inches into centimeters. We know that the conversion factor from centimeters to inches is exactly 2.54, so 
So I'm going to multiply this by 3.54. Again, inches goes in the denominator because we're wanting to um, cancel something in the numerator. So inches cancel. Now our answer is going to be in centimeters. There are 100 centimeters per meter, so centimeters goes in the denominator here. The number is 100. Notice that when I multiply this out, it's going to, in the calculator, I'm going to say 7,926 times 5280 times 12 times 2.54 divided 100 divided 1,000. And the final answer is going to be in kilometers. You'll see that all the other units cancel. So the Earth's diameter in kilometers is 12,755.6 kilometers. We know that a radius is half of the diameter. So we divide our diameter by 2, and we get the radius of the outer shell. So it'll be the radius that's going to give us V1 is 6,377.8 kilometers. We know that the V crust, I've just discussed that earlier, volume of the crust is going to be given by V1 minus V2, outer shell minus inner shell. The volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. I used subscripted variables here, so I have r1 and r2. I'm using the same variable, but it's not the same number. So I'm, I'm putting an r1 and r2 because these two numbers are different. Then I factored out the 4 over 3 pi, put it in brackets so that I can just work on these two numbers. I put the two numbers in. Where did I get this second number? This is the radius of the inner crust, and it's 32 kilometers uh, smaller. I converted because it says in the question 20 miles, but I had to convert the 20 miles into kilometers. So 20 miles times 5,280 feet per mile and so on. The same rigmarole as I have here, and I end up with 32.18 kilometers. Uh, so I subtract that 32 kilometers from here to get this number. Now I, I raise both of these to the power of 3 because it's, the, the formula calls for r cubed. And we're going to go to the third board and it's going to show us uh, the rest of the calculation. So I've entered. Just bring, I just pick it up. Just bring the phone. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh. So we'll, uh, we'll continue the calculation. I've turned the R1 and R2 into their actual numbers by entering them in the calculator. I subtracted it, multiplied it by 4 over 3 pi, and I get 1.63 times 10 to the 10 kilometers cubed. That's the volume of the Earth's crust. I then multiply it by 1,000 meters per kilometer to convert kilometers cubed into meters cubed. You'll notice I also raised the conversion factor to a power of 3 because it's a volume conversion. Same here, I've raised it to the power of 3 to turn it into centimeters cubed. So now I've turned this number of kilometers cubed into centimeters cubed. I then multiply it by the density of the Earth's crust on the average, and I have the mass of the Earth's crust in grams. Now I take that mass, multiply it by 7.5%, and it gives you the mass of aluminum in the Earth's crust. Now because aluminum has a density of 2.7, I looked this up on the periodic table, I'm going to plug that number and this number into this equation. I've rearranged the density equation to solve for volume. And it's going to give me the volume of aluminum. This is the volume of aluminum that we have calculated for the Earth's crust. If we take the cube root of this, and we imagine that we put this whole thing in a cube, this is going to be the height of the cube. Well, the cube root of this number is going to be the height of the cube. That's the height of the cube in centimeters. And now we switch it back to kilometers by dividing by... 100 to turn it into centimeters, into meters, divided by 1,000 to turn to kilometers. This is the number we get. But of course, we're not going to report that number because there would be too many um, significant figures. Really, you're only allowed about two significant figures in this calculation. So, final answer, all the aluminum in the Earth's crust would make a cube 1,100 kilometers in height. Now, are there any questions that relate to any of the steps that we did here? Any clarifications you need?